Hi, I'm Brad, and I'm here to inject you with some fresh copium in the form of Gamescope. Gamescope. I've been talking about Gamescope and maybe its relevance to Valve's future VR AR plans because it's been a couple years now since we got a huge leak in the form of a SteamOS image that was accidentally leaked on a forum by a Valve employee. It basically gave all the thermals for what kind of chips was inside the device and also told exactly what modules that the headset would have to load to do all of its magical VR AR thingamajigs. And Gamescope was basically the one of the first modules that it loaded. In fact, it was loaded before Steam VR itself. This includes stuff as making sure it works with DRM leasing, which is, allows you to bypass the actual monitor creation tool that most GPUs use that Valve kind of popularized back in its older Linux days in 2017 with VR. One of those more important changes to Gamescope over the past few months has been really trying to get HDR working, especially 10-bit HDR in Steam VR. There's no headset that I am aware of that actually does 10-bit HDR natively with SteamVR at the moment. And the fact that they're focusing so much on making sure SteamVR supports 10-bit, not only that, but Gamescope, which is the same compositor that the Steam Deck uses for all its thing, despite the Steam Deck is, of course, far from HDR itself. It's been fun to watch the sort of changes being happening to the code in their official GitHub. Seeing all these changes to Gamescope made me more and more want to actually build and run Gamescope and its own overlay experience in Steam VR, which wasn't exactly the easiest up until now, but thanks to someone I've been working with, or I really should say they've been doing a lot of the heavy work for me, someone somewhere, that's their tag online, we get, did a bunch of cool experiments using that exact concept, and it goes very related to my last video talking about how Valve could use Deckard as sort of this Linux spatial computer. And some of the stuff we've been able to do thus far is quite magical. I think it's really exciting. Before I talk about the actual Gamescope feature set and all the overlays that we've been able to build with it, it's important to note the actual relevance of overlays in SteamVR as it is now. Overlays are an extremely powerful tool that is run on OpenVR with SteamVR that allows you to basically build and create any sort of 2D or in some cases 3D applications running on top of any SteamVR or if you really want to go into pass-through mode, any Steam AR sort of experience. Valve's been fleshing out the overlays feature a bit over the years, allowing you to do stuff such as attach things to your wrist and really just float them into the world. I've also been reporting over the years that there's this SteamVR theater mode that's meant to replace the very old aging one, and it's built with the actual overlay system that we currently have. The idea is you can use any of these actual overlays or windows that you create with SteamVR and either dim to however you'd like your actual VR AR environment and add reflections based on whatever's being shown on the screen. Now the reflections don't work, I've never been able to get them working, but they are in there and all, all the stuff to get that ready when the time comes is there. And getting this Gamescope compositor as an open VR overlay has actually worked not only for all the other overlay systems, but also, of course, the SteamVR theater mode. Now, it's important to remind people this is a Linux thing. This is very Linux focused. Uh, that's what Gamescope is built for. But it's also important to note the difference of really what is the difference between running a Gamescope compositor built into SteamVR versus the desktop view that you get on something like Windows, where you can actually see your monitor and just kind of do things in SteamVR from there. Well, that desktop view is quite buggy because it relies on a lot of underlying systems of whatever operating you're using. So things such as resolution and refre uh, refresh rate is not based on what your actual HMD is, it's based on the monitor it's plugged in. So if you have a low refresh rate monitor like 60 Hertz, you're not going to be able to get that actually rescaled correctly to your HMD whenever you put it into a 3D environment. And there's some cases where you might have mismatch between those uh, refresh rates between your HMD and your monitor. So you'll get a lot of tearing whenever you try to actually run those games in sort of these 2D environments. It's also important for things such as HDR. If you have an SDR monitor, obviously if you have an HDR headset, you cannot create HDR monitors based on what you have physically. Your VR system is fully reliant on that flat screen that you're not even using when you're wearing a VR headset. Gamescope is basically built in this way to bypass all of that and allows you to not only run any game, app, uh, or any really experience that you want from the Linux desktop, 
but it creates its own compositor that bypasses all those things, can create HDR uh, versions of these windows. In fact, you actually have to use an HDR uh, color coding to actually get working correctly with this actual GameScope VR uh, overlay. But you can tap in some of the features of GameScope that's used on Steam Deck, such as FSR upscaling, which allows you to get better performance as you try boosting that game up to 90 hertz or more, the same refresh rate of your headset. Now, you don't even need to use actual individual apps like Firefox or, or, or any games. You can even do amazing things such as run an entire desktop environment in this GameScope compositor that you create. So the example here was using the desktop uh, environment known as Plasma, the same one used for Steam Deck's uh, uh, desktop mode. You just pop it in in your environment and it loads up and you can have as many of them theoretically as you want, as many of these flat desktops that you're so accustomed to. And this is where the magic of spatial computing kind of comes in because the idea that you could curve these screens, make them whatever aspect ratio, whatever size, whatever frame rate and add AMD FSR upscaling to it, you can see where some of the cool things could get magical. And from there, due to the fact that Linux is inherently a very open source platform, you can kind of do whatever you want to it. I've seen people do amazing things such as apply some really cool post-processing and shaders to those 2D windows, such as putting them in a old style TV and adding sort of a post-processing layer like interlacing to make it look like an old screen TV, which is a kind of a little gimmicky but magical thing. I can even imagine some cool sort of scenarios where you can get shaders such as the popular one used in VR chat, where it's the RGB subpixel shader. The idea is when you get close to the screen, you can see each RGB subpixel get, uh, light up based on what's being shown. I would love to see something like that in a spatial environment where I can just kind of load my VR or AR space with a bunch of old style uh, 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 CRT monitors and just see that going. This stuff doesn't even require SteamVR to actually work. There's been a lot of interesting kind of desktop systems being made for XR and Linux. Uh, a big one I'd like to kind of showcase today is Stardust XR, which is where I've been showing you these images of these cool TV screens. They've been talking about ideas such as having big bulky laptops from the 90s that they can recreate with an actual working keyboard and the actual screen. And it's really magical just to see what the Linux community has already been doing. Just like how emulation on the Steam Deck has grown to be quite popular with Emu Deck, I can see XR taking that to the next level with not just having these old style screens, but being able to create these actual 3D consoles in any environment that you're in and be able to plop in actual uh, virtual cartridges in those things to take advantage of that as well. There's a lot of cool things you can do, including running an entire instance of Android. So if you ever want an Android tablet for some reason, you can imagine with things such as hand tracking, be able to touch and play prod with anything uh, with an actual x86 space spatial Linux computer. A lot of things just are opened up and it makes me more excited about the future of XR than a few games or whatever Apple is doing in their closed sort of system. Basically, I want to end this video saying that this GameScope overlay has already shown a lot of excitement for me and just getting games working in the Linux and 2D screens. I hope one day that we can add stuff such as 3D stereoscopy to them because Honestly, every best 3D uh, game experience I've ever had was while wearing a VR headset because you're already rendering an image to each eye anyway. So if you can add all these cool shaders, add 3D to the perspective and all these things, this is really where XR begins to shine. You can use a wide variety of inputs, such as touch or whatever you want to add onto these open source programs. And it's, it's a dream for enthusiasts, basically. This, this is the, the sort of level where I think XR should be going and I think it's all really exciting. But that's everything I had to say in this video. I just wanted to give you that cool tidbit of what has been happening the past couple days with the game scope and everything that we've been kind of tinkering with and I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope we got as excited for you as it has been for me because really the opportunities are limitless, limitless, limit, limitless. Yeah. And I believe we always need that little injection of copium even if it's just Gamescope. Bye.